Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of R&K Distributing and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I've had a couple of questions. I've been on the internet. I've never been on Facebook. I've never really had a Facebook presence and decided to join the world. So I created a Facebook page and I'm on Facebook. Well, I found a couple of wonderful link groups that have to do with software and Floriani and everything. So I saw questions in there that I thought that I would answer here today. So I'm looking forward to this. So the first question I had, and I did already create a little video and post it on my web page and within that group um, to answer the question, but I want to answer it for all of us. The question was, how do I use the notes page? So let me show you. If I go into my designs folder, and let me just pull in a design. Now I've got a design here. Now let's say I want to um, say where I use that design. This is going to be Jessica's placemats. And I also um, used Moda fabric from the Backyard Chickens Collection. Just making this up, obviously. So I would know that those are there. So I'm putting notes in here. I could also put notes in that I used um, placemats from XYZ. I used All About Blanks uh, placemats. Just so you get the idea, you can put notes in here, anything that you wish you can put in here in the notes page. So once you have notes in there, then if I go over here, let's look. Let's go to File, left mouse click, let's left mouse click on Print, Preview. And you will notice down here at the bottom, all the notes I put in are here. They're also saved with this design. So anytime, or with when I save the design. So if I save this design, anytime I bring it back up, my notes will be in the notes section. So notes are really handy to have, especially things like this. Because, you know, you go to, re to redo something such as, uh, let's say, a bath towel. And you've done a bunch of bath towels for somebody, and you forget which font you used, which sizes you used. Well, if you had saved it with under with your design and put what it was then you would be able to pull it back up very easily now we have two or three things we can do this way but I love having the design notes it's a very handy option to have now I'll show you one other thing and it's um it's what I call the good with the bad and I tried to call DJ today but apparently he is out of the country having a vacation so I didn't get an answer to my question but here's the deal. Also, if I say File, Save to Sew, excuse me, it went right to Save. File, Save to Sew, I'm going to left mouse click, and let's say I'm going to put this on, um, I'm going to put this on Cotton Lawn, and I didn't digitize it, and I want all the new style settings, and I'm going to go to Next. Now what's going to happen here is it's also going to tell me with our Save to Sew, if you don't know how to deal with the fabric, you're going to get step-by-step -step instructions on how to. For instance, you're going to put Floriani Dreamweave on the back of it. Now I can click Watch Video to watch how that's done. But what I'm getting to here is when I go to Finish and save it as whatever, it doesn't matter, I'm not saving it, I want you to notice what it did. In my notes section, it told me step by step how to hoop this, what to do. The bad news is it wiped out my personal notes. So my question is going to be to DJ when he gets back in town, are we going to make that so it will retain our notes as well as add in the stabilizers? So that's a pretty cool feature. The only thing you have to make sure of in this feature to have it work is in your settings, you need to have design notes checked as on. Because if you don't, you can put the notes in there, but they won't come out on your printed piece. Now, they would still come up with your design, but they wouldn't print over here. 
So just a little note. Now my next question that I thought was a great question was, let me get a new piece of paper here, was asking about angles. Now why would we want different angles? So here we go. Let's say that I have, let me see what I can do. I'm going to come over here, of course, remember Kathy always uses whatever tools she can get to um, draw with. Now I'm going to do a little center here. Now I'm going to turn this into a wave fill so I've got a little center in there. Okay, so now I've got the center and I'm going to go to some pretty colors here. I'll fill it in. I'm not a pink person, but this is going to have a pink center. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm looking for something that I can use as a petal. Oh, I know what would be kind of cool. Let's do, um, no, that won't work. Let me think. I'm trying to find something that's kind of petal shaped or something I can work with because, of course, you can reshape anything. Let's go ahead and do the orange piece. Okay, I'm going to shrink this down. I'm going to come in and I'm going to make this around and I'm going to copy and paste that and I'm going to mirror image it. I'm just playing with artwork and I could go ahead and copy and paste. Let's move this up a little bit. Let's rotate it. But you kind of get the idea. I'm doing some petals around my flower uh, for someone that can't draw. So I find having these tools in here, all this artwork and stuff, it's a wonderful thing for me. And cetera. We could put all the, all the petals in, but that's enough to get the idea across. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this petal and let's just give it a regular fill, standard fill. Now here's the issue. Let's go ahead and 3D that. Now you see the angle of these are not coming down like the petal of a flower would come down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to come into my shape tool. Now here is my angle line. It's got the black circles on it. So what I'm going to do with my angle line, and let me show you an easy way to work with angles too. Right mouse click, edit, and all I want to do is edit the inclinations is what it calls it. That's angle. But it gets rid of anything else I could grab by accident. And I'm trying to move this thing. There we go. And I'm going to move this angle where it's kind of coming out in the angle I would want it to come out from the center. So I'm going to enter so it becomes real. Now I've made those stitches come this way. So by that we could select each one of these, go down and select them all, and we can now make it turn the way we need our angles turned. Now there's several things in angles. One is we would need the angle coming at different rays like a sun coming out from this center. That would be one thing. Also, if you have um, like a leaf, let's, let's do this. Let's do a leaf and I'll show you something else on it. Okay, I know I've got leaves in here, thank you God. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to get a leaf. And we'll use this leaf right here. So I'm going to select this leaf. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and with this leaf selected, I'm going to come in here and since it's artwork, I can slice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice from here to here. So I've got one point, one point, and I'm going to right mouse click. So I've got this slice. And then I'm going to select that same slice tool again. Whoops. Well, you can see I sliced it. And I sliced it away from the stem for a good reason that you'll see in a moment. Let's go back to this piece of artwork. Now I'm going to get that slice tool again and I'm going to come and I'm going to slice by left mouse clicking 
up the center of this leaf, okay? Right mouse click. Now I've got two halves. See, I've got two halves here. So I'm going to take this first half and I'm going to turn it into stitches. And I'm going to make them green. I'm going to take this half and I'm going to turn them into stitches and I'm going to make it the same green. Now you can see this doesn't look very leafy because our angles are off. So I'm going to select this, come in here, and I'm going to, it's always easier for me if I right mouse click on the outline. Well, maybe. My, uh, I get so much going on this computer at once that it gets ugly with me. You can see. I'm going to see if I can't grab this little angle line. There it is. And I am going to make this angle, not the outline. See if I can right mouse click if it'll let me. There, did that time. I'm going to do the inclination line only. So what I need to do is I want this coming at this angle. Enter. Now I'm going to grab this side and I'm going to do the same thing. I want this angle coming from here. So when I 3D that, you can see, other than the fact they're two different fills for some reason, let me make this the same fill, dear God. I'm telling you, it only happens on our videos. Um, I don't know how I'm, oh, I, you know, I know what I did is I clicked fancy fill instead of just a regular fill. Hang on. I don't want a fancy fill in there, not, a, not for this exercise. There we go. Now we've got the same fill. So see how my fills are coming both in toward the center, whereas before they were going up and down. Then you could come in and you could get your line tool and you could add a vein down the middle and put some straight stitches across it and you could fill the stem in separate. And I'd fill the stem in maybe with an auto satin, you know, so it looks stemmy. So you get the idea. But see, doing that, angles are very important. And what will happen here is, this all looks one color here, but when you stitch out something that's at a different angle, the light is going to hit the thread at a separate angle, and what it's going to do is it's going to give it the appearance of being shaded. When it actually isn't shaded, all you did was change the angle to look right for you. So you get the idea of how to change the angles and why. There, that's going to look even better. So there we have two nice angles coming in, and then we'll put some kind of center in here. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's mini lessons, one on how to put notes into a design, and the other, why are angle lines important. The only other thing I can think of about an angle line real quick that I'm going to go ahead and answer or, or show you, if I come in to do a fill, let's say I'm going to create a fill, when I come in, Okay, so I have left mouse clicked. Now I'm going to right mouse click. Now the angle line comes in because it's asking me instead of going backwards where I would fill it and then put change the angle, I can now say, well, I want my stitches to go this way. Then when I right mouse click, it's putting a where do I want to start? Where am I going to end? And now the fill has been created and it is going the direction that I told it to go. So if that was the question on the angle line, that's why it's there. And you'll find the same thing when you're creating uh, satin stitches that come in, path satins, block satins. A lot of times it's going to ask you for the angle line first rather than you have to create it. Then click the select the design, go to stitch edit, pick up your angle line. It's just much easier to do it first. So I hope you enjoyed tonight's lesson. I look forward to seeing you next week, and feel free to visit me at So Fine Diva with Kathy Quinn on Facebook. Look forward to seeing you. Good night.